You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. 
one free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Every day... The men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Folks, it's Friday night. We've made it. That's right. That means it's time for Robinson and Wright right here on KLRNRadio.com. I am one half of the crew, Mr. Big Robinson. He's the other half of the crew, Mr. Dan Wright. And how are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing good. So I'm glad to be on. It's been a week of radio for me. This is my third night. Unlike you, who does third, third night show. 8,000 shows a week. <laughs> Shut up, slacker. <laughs> it's my third night. I'm like on episode 22 for the week. All right, so anyway. So, uh, yeah, lots of interesting stuff going on in the news. Lots of interesting things to talk about. We have the uh, Ninth Jerkit Court of Appeals that's decided that, you know, that a Washington judge knows better than a sitting president what the Constitution reads. Uh, we have a <clears throat> sitting senator who decided to defame, another, to defame another sitting senator and then whined because she got censured for defaming said senator. Um, we have people protesting an ICE facility because someone who was a convicted felon who was told in 2013 that she needed to leave the country and then refused to do so because, you know, back then Obama was doing the whole we trust you to self-deport thing. <laughs> yeah, that worked out real well. Um, and now everybody's up in arms because a convicted felon who's been here legally for like 20-something years and knew she shouldn't have been here in the first place is in the process of being deported. And, of course, now there are ICE raids starting and everybody's up in arms about that. There are groups of protesters yelling things like, hey, hey, ho, ho, deportation's got to go. Um, kind of by definition, I think that's what that means, but I'm not sure that's what they meant. Anyway. Well, it, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, we've got, you know, along the same lines, yeah, she shouldn't be here, but... Um, when you get to the extreme left, they they're they're calling for like closing all the prisons. So, I guess just lawlessness is is the 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 word of twenty seventeen. Well, yeah, I mean, well, that, that 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 that's the whole thing. I mean, we have. I mean, it, it, it goes back to a question I asked on last night's, actually the whole show last night, 
hinged around this particular question. Are we a nation of laws, yes or no? Because it seems to me that the left wants us to not be a nation of laws. Unless, of course, it's laws that they like. Right. Like, um, don't let your cows fart in California. Or laws that... They like those laws. or Or laws that let men who look like men go into a lady's room because they feel a little funny that day. Yes. I mean, it's... The 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 way they work right now is is if you agree with them, they are the tolerant left. If you disagree with them, you are a fascist traitor, and you deserve I don't know. I've heard so many things, and it's. You know, and, and, and I do, I said this on the show the other night with Susan, it's, I'm actually finding, I've actually become friends in the last few months with a lot more Democrats because there really is a large group of Democrats that think it's crazy, the outrage and everything else with Trump and everything. They just think it's nuts. They're like, what? are these people that I'm supposed to be aligned with doing. And I've actually sparked up a couple of really cool friendships and, and people that I can talk to and debate with, and it's friendly. So I, I see some positives maybe coming out of all this. I really think we really have an extreme left and an extreme right. And a lot of people that are conservatives and progressives in the middle – that are actually starting to get have real dialogue kick up, well, it, which is really cool. It, I, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of something that I was talking about at the day job the other day uh, with some friends of mine because I think what's happened is we've had the extreme left go so far to the extreme and the extreme right, or now as they pretty much are the alt-right, um, go so far to the right that it sent everybody that was kind of, you know, Right of center and left of center now screaming towards the center because there's just there's just there's there's just no way to deal with it or cope. And I mean it, it's just especially I mean because anymore if you give Trump any praise for anything, all of a sudden you're a Nazi. If you hold, try to hold him accountable for anything, you're a liberal. I mean there's there's just, there's just no uh, there's no making anybody happy anymore. But it's no, and, it's, and, and but I mean, it, it's what I'm what I'm seeing is it's it's I mean, I, I literally have some friends that you would consider uh, center left of center that actually look at some of these McMullen people and go, what are they doing? They they literally are looking at a guy that is saying he's conservative and going, wow, he just passed us <laughs> going towards the left. Yeah. At about war I mean, nine. Yeah. It's, it's insane. What, what this, the, the whole dynamic that has happened because of this election is, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, I'm really enjoying it. It's really kind of a, uh, in some ways, a cool thing to see how how things are coming around like i said i'm i'm on social media i'm actually in some chat groups where it's like half the group is conservatives and half is is i, I you know i hate the word but i'll just say it anyway liberals but we all get along and we've created some friendships and we can talk about stuff and nobody argues it's it's really kind of it's it's kind of cool you know, it, it almost makes you wonder, well, maybe all of this is actually starting to maybe bring America back together again. And I, I honestly, I think you, you are probably right. And I think it's going to happen the same way a lot of the other changes have been happening. And it's going to happen through the grassroots. It's not going to be the government that does it. It's going to be the people finally deciding, you know what, I've had enough of these crazy people. But it's interesting that you bring up the tolerance of the left. I have some audio from Republican Senator Tim Scott 
on the left and their definition of tolerance. So I figured we might as well use that. Is that the liberal left that speaks and desires for all of us to be tolerant? Do not want to be tolerant of anyone that disagrees with where they are coming from. So the definition of tolerance isn't that all Americans experience a high level of tolerance. It's that all Americans who agree with them experiences this so-called tolerance. I mean, it's basically the same thing that you had said, just little fancier words. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but. and um, I know he went into some of the things that he's been called by the left, too. Um, it's the, their, their idea, he's, he's exactly right, their idea of tolerance is we are going to be tolerant of you as long as you agree with us. And, that, and, and, and they prove and that that's over the and over extreme, le- that's the extreme left. You know, it, it really is. Like I said, I mean, I've, yeah, I, I've, I've been making friendships, and and it's back to, you know, what I liked a few years ago on social media. I mean, I got onto Twitter because I loved to debate, and it got to the point where there was no debate anymore. It was, you try to debate, and then you get called a name. Okay, whatever. I've, I used to have some great debates, you know, that would go on for for hours, and they would be great, and it would always end up with, "Hey, cool talking to you." It just doesn't. It 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 got to the point where it just never happened anymore. You know, and and that's that's honestly one of the things that's kind of turned me off with Twitter lately. I mean, most of the time, if I'm on Twitter, I'm usually engaged in one of the groups that we're in, or helping people push content because. I don't really enjoy discussing things with with people on Twitter anymore because it's become such a an area where it's there's nothing but polar opposites and nobody's willing to talk about anything anymore because you're either for Trump or you're against Trump and there's no middle ground. I mean, there's plenty of middle ground in groups. I mean, people will give you honest opinions in group, but if you start trying to to, to have conversations with people that you don't know, and try to, you know, point out, well, you know, this over here that he's doing, not so bad. This over here, like the fact that he's gone a little crazy with executive orders, in my opinion, uh, that gets me called all kinds of names. I think I actually got called a conservative uh, again the other day because I was pointing out that I really wish he would put down the pen and actually start running things through Congress. Um, and then I heard something on talk radio that actually, while I understand what he was trying to say, it concerns me, which has been happening a lot with this particular individual lately. Uh, Sean Hannity actually started using a phrase on his show yesterday. (coughs) He was calling it the speed of Trump. He was mad because Congress isn't moving at the speed of Trump. He was mad because Trump hit the ground running and Congress is dragging their heels. And I understand what he means. But what upsets me is there are too many people that don't understand how this country works that are getting mad because of the language that he uses. Uh I lost my co-host. Anyway, they get mad over the language that he uses because they don't understand that Congress by nature moves very slowly. Let's see if we can get Dan back. What do you say? I don't know what happened. Pardon the ringing sound, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to find my co-host again. Hello. Did you decide you were done talking to me tonight? (laughs) I guess so, because there he goes again. (laughs) Nice. Did I offend you? (laughs) Because you keep hanging up on me. (laughs) And... and here we go. More technical issues. Woohoo! My, Yay for my headset's ones. dead again. <laughs> I didn't hang up. My phone did. But you're on speaker now. Probably sounds terrible while I get my other headset together. Eh, it'll work for right now. <laughs> so I completely missed everything you finished with there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, actually, I got so flustered when we lost you, I almost forgot what I was saying. Um, so, anyway. Um, but, 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 you know what? Uh, we're going to consider that thought finished. I was just kind of continuing about the whole leftist rant thing and how they seem to have nothing but hate and fear-mongering anymore. I think we've kind of dealt with that enough. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my Skype. I do not lose my headset if I'm on a regular phone line, but I lose it if I'm on Skype. Weird. I think I think it's time for me to send a complaint to Skype. I lose my headset, and then I lose my connection. Yeah, I would definitely say that's kind of an unusual thing. So, now that the show's been completely derailed... Hey, no, wrong show. That's the one I do on the other weekdays. <laughs> keep them straight, man. Come on. If I do tw- if, if I can do 22 shows a week and keep up with what the names are, so can you. No, I'm just playing. All right, so anyway, um, like I was saying, I mean, the biggest issue that I have right now is... And, and that's what it was. I was talking about how I don't even really enjoy debating anybody on Twitter anymore. But it's not just because of that. It's because of the people that sit on Twitter and just outright troll for the sake of trolling. It's one thing to have a discussion. It's another thing to disagree with somebody when you're having a discussion. But when you have people that create accounts for the sole purpose of trying to attack you and defame you and make fun of you and do it over and over and over again, and you deal with one and then 14 more pop up in their place, it just it's made Twitter no fun. I, I, I literally... you know what you know what I'm going through. Well, yeah, that's. Part I mean, of the... I have a guy that he's he's been going after me for weeks. He's on like his thirtieth account, you know, and and you can block and get him suspended, whatever. He comes right back. You don't know he's there until he comes after you, and it's, you know, I I, I mean, I, it, it's one of the few things that I kind of can't blame Twitter for. It's like, what are they supposed to do? How are they supposed to know until they can just ban an IP? And if the guy's using a VPN or his his library Wi-Fi, how do they ban an IP? They can't. Um, yeah. It's as a former IT guy. Let me let a little cat out of a bag on an IP ban. Um, most non-professional internet service providers have have what are called dynamic IP addresses. You do a little command prompt, then you get a new IP, so it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, it's and 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 like I said, I mean, I mean, I'm guilty of it. I mean, everybody's using VPNs. You know, it's you can you can Twitter Twitter has people that can break a VPN. I mean, you know, you can backtrack a VPN, but are they really going to take time to do that? No, they're not. Um. Well, I mean, and, and, you know. that, and that's the thing, though. Half the time anymore, you have to use a VPN because you'll have people that seem legitimate and you'll they'll you'll see a blog post or something and you'll click on it and you don't realize that if you're not either viewing an archived version of it or viewing it through a VPN so that they don't actually get your real IP address without having, without having to do some digging, there are people that will actually mine your IP address and then backtrack things to you and then do God knows what. That's part of what this crazy person that we were that we were talking about that's been in the country for 22 years and is guilty of uh, identity fraud and was actually convicted of a felony over it. I mean, those are the type of people that we're talking about. These people now have a, an area where they can basically just sit and wait for people to come to them. And then they do God knows what with your information that they're able to obtain by backtracking your IP information, finding a way into your system. Most everybody isn't smart enough to change their passwords on a regular basis. Everybody uses similar passwords. They use variations of the same one over and over and over again with a few characters different. And with about five minutes worth of coding, you can write a program that would find those passwords in 30 to 45 seconds. And nobody takes that stuff into account when they hang out on social media like this. And that's one of the things that drives me crazy about the people that I know that are there, that I know are doing things they shouldn't be. And Twitter doesn't give a damn. No, they don't. I mean, I mean, I see it. You know, you, you've seen it with me over the last few weeks. 
You know, I, I get harassed and I get suspended because I'm getting harassed and, and all, you know, Twitter, all Twitter looks at all, all this, all this guy has to do is, is find one of his friends with a big account and have his friend just put out a bunch of DMS and say, report this guy's tweets. And if, if something gets reported enough, it doesn't matter what the content of the tweet is. If it gets reported enough, Twitter doesn't even look at the content of the tweet. They just say, oh my God, this tweet just got reported 500 times. We got to suspend this guy. And that's what happens. It's, you know, and to a certain extent, I get it, you know, but to a certain extent, you know, then you appeal it and they say, no, we're, you're, you're, you you're suspended for targeted harassment. We have overwhelming evidence. Well, their overwhelming evidence is that 500 people reported me. That's the way they work it. Um, I, they are, they are trying to fix things. Um, they, they've closed a loophole where to create an account, all you had to do was just type in an email address. It didn't even have to be a real email address. Just type in an email address and boom, you've created an account. Now they are verifying email addresses. If it's not a real email address, the account does not get created. They just closed that. You know, they're, 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 they're sort of trying, um, but they've got rules now too that if you are found to be a serial, you know, a, a, a person that has been banned multiple times, then, then you're just going to be banned completely. Well, I have been banned twice in the last month, month and a half for not doing anything wrong. So they could look at it and say, oh, well, we can link these two accounts together with your account now. You're, you're a serial harasser. Well, I didn't harass anybody. I just got mass reported. So now they could literally just completely ban me from the platform so that anything with my name in it is instantly banned and, and I'm done, but I did nothing wrong. So we'll see how their new rules work out. Well, you know, I, I may, I may be, zone. I may be a John Doe on Twitter in a month. <laughs> I'm, I already kind of feel like a John Doe on Twitter now. Just saying. All right, <laughs> but anyway, no, it's just, it's just one of those things. It's, it, it's been bugging me lately because I mean, I've seen big blowups between friends over this whole thing with a certain group that keeps rearing their ugly head and coming back at people. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm over it, man. I mean, I'm just done. You know, I I, st I started using Twitter to try to promote the stuff that I'm building and try to interact with people. I didn't start Twitter to deal with trolls on a daily basis and to deal with people that just want to attack you for the sake of attacking you. I, I don't know how to... I don't want to deal with that. I've spent a good portion of my life in career choices that made me deal with that in public on a daily basis. I don't want to deal with it on social media. And granted, those were my life choices. I get it. But it's also my life choice now to avoid that crap. I mean, I don't... I just... I don't get it. I mean, how can, how is it that you could be... That you could have such a boring life or such a poor image of yourself that all you do is sit online on Twitter all day long looking for somebody to attack just for the sake of attacking them? I don't understand that type of a mindset. No, I don't either. And... And... Uh... Yeah, I mean, the, the person that we're talking about, this person, it's, it's, it's all this person does. It literally, this person's life is devoted to trying to just peg everybody that she has ever had a disagreement with as a bully 
and a woman hater and everything else. And she does everything she can to make those people, those people's lives miserable, not just on Twitter. She does what she can to try to make their lives miserable off of Twitter, like their personal lives and go after their employers and go after their families. I mean, it's, it's insane. The, the amount of time somebody will devote over trying to destroy somebody over a disagreement on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane. I, 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 these people need to be put on lithium or something because it's, it's insane. And, and you and I have watched it with numerous people with this person. Numerous very good people, not people that are bad and terrible and bullying people. No, I mean, exactly. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to spend too much more time talking about this. It's just, no. it's just something that, you know, it kind of popped in when the show went off the rails for a moment there. Ha, see, I did it that time. All right. So <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and take a break. That'll give us a chance to uh, recover from the uh, technical issue because it's about time to to pay some bills anyway and then when we come back we'll actually get back on topic we actually have uh some audio over this whole uh focahontas dust up that we'll be playing when we get back this is robinson and Wright. we'll be back here in just about well about three three and a half minutes ish maybe if i can ever get this thing to load <laughs> not listening to me all right we'll be right back The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps Stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that 
may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800 610 This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Having a place to go after school will make you a better student. Having an outlet to express yourself will make you a better artist. Having something to do together will make you a better family. At The Y, we're helping build better friends, listeners, writers, swimmers, scientists, and musicians one chance at a time. Get the gift of opportunity. Support The Y at ymca.net. The Y for a better us. Come on, come on, come on. All right, folks, welcome back. All right, so we've had a minute there, well, a couple minutes to recover from the technical issues there in the very beginning. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out and remaining patient while we deal with Skype. Uh, I don't know. Something's going on with that program. It used to work so well, and then they started updating it every five minutes, and since then, it just kind of goes a little wonky from time to time. All right, so back on topic. We have uh, Focahontas, who's back in the news because she's been an idiot again. Um, And despite what she's been telling everyone, the... uh, uh, And actually, we'll hear this from uh, Marco Rubio here in just a second, but despite what she seems to think, these rules that she's been tagged for violating they aren't new so let's listen to this these are the continuing rules of the senate that have been in existence previous to this time and have carried over in, into this session is that correct so yeah i mean th- th- these are not new rules that this no. isn't, this isn't something that somebody pulled out of the pulled a rabbit out of the hat and said hey you know what we're going to use this rule that nobody's ever heard of before to get pocahontas in trouble no that isn't what happened Focahontas knew what she was doing when she did what she did. Yes, it started innocently enough. She read a statement that was written by someone else, but then she used that statement and started making other statements that were blatantly directed at another sitting senator, which is a violation of the Senate rules. You cannot do those type of things on the floor for a very, very good reason, and this is why. And maybe it's because of my background and where I'm surrounded by people that... uh have lost freedoms in places where they're not allowed to speak. One of the great traditions of our nation is the ability to come forward and have debates. But the founders and the framers and those who established this institution and guided it for over two centuries understood that that debate was impossible if, in fact, the matters became of a personal nature. And that's the truth. I mean, when you you take something from the level of rational debate and discourse to a personal attack and you're maligning someone... Then, then it changes the dynamic. And the Senate and the founders understood this, and it's one of the reasons that these rules have always existed. Now, I have uh, been cautioning the GOP since they decided to use this particular rule, because now that they've decided to use it, when the pendulum swings the other way, which it will at some point inevitably do, uh, then the Democrats will remember that they've used this particular rule, and the first time they feel like the Republicans have stepped over a certain line, some of them will probably get censored. Uh, but but let's, let's be honest. I mean, we saw dur- during the Obama administration, Hillary Clinton, who was a sitting senator, who was being confirmed for Secretary of State, and not uh, now i don't know what was said behind closed doors and i don't know what was said in meetings but in on the floor in the public scope of their work they never said one bad thing about secretary uh, nominee hillary clinton secretary of state nominee hillary clinton Kerry wasn't even attacked on the senate floor for god's sake by republicans no and, no and i, I mean it's 
the attacks, just the attacks in, in general, I mean, the scrutiny that the left has put on every single nominee has been insane. It's just been insane. I mean, it. We, we go back, we've talked about it. On Inauguration Day 2008, six of, of Barack Obama's nominees were approved. Six. How long did, how, where, how, how far in are we from the inauguration right now? Uh, what, that was, what, January 20th? So, January 20th. So yeah, we're at about, what, 20 days out? 21, yeah. 21 days out, because it's 31 days in January. So three weeks, and people are still rioting in the streets and weeping and gnashing of teeth and not my president, you know, and, and you know, and I get it. I understand that there, that there was because because I remember reading about them. They weren't nearly as vocal as the group now, but I remember a small group of really ex- extreme Republicans when Barack Obama first got elected that started trying to get the whole "not my president" thing going. But the funny thing is, we shouted them down, and they shut up. Yeah. Nobody's shouting these crazies down. If anything, they're pumping them up. Oh, yeah, he's not my president either. I still see that hashtag all over social media. Not my president. Well, guess what? If he's not your president, that means you're not an American. So leave. Exactly. I, I never I never once said that Obama wasn't my president. He was. I live in the United States. He's the president. He's my president. May not be the president that I wanted, may have disagreed with 99.99999% of everything he tried to do. He was still my president. I mean, I live here. He's the president of the United States. If you can't accept that the guy from the other side is the president, then you have a real problem. And like you said, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that there weren't dissenters there were but i called them nuts too i i was like you're not helping just stop no because because they weren't helping and the only the only time that i really started becoming vocal about barack obama was when all the audio started to surface about him saying in public you know that the united states was not a country that could deal with single payer and he didn't think it was a good idea. And then all this private audio leaked when he was, you know, doing the thing that Romney got slammed for, you know, saying one thing in public and another thing in private. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm for single payer. Actually, that's what I'm hoping this leads to is single payer. You know, they have audio of him saying that. I played that I don't know how many times during his first term over and over and over again just to try to prove the point that the man was saying one thing in public and another thing in private. And then the, then the left slams Romney for his, what was it, his 57% remark or something? I don't remember what percentage point it was. Yeah. But which is basically, you know, something completely different than what he was saying in public. And I'm like, you guys are, you're, you're doing this to him and your guy's been doing the same thing for years. And it's just, none of this makes sense to me because we live in a country where we are allowed, where we're, where we're legally obligated to disagree in some instances, because if there's things going on that we don't agree with, then we should be allowed to have a voice. That's what the First Amendment is about. But the issue with all of this is these people are not just voicing dissent. They have become, they, they have become rioters in a lot of instances. UC Berkeley, for God's sake, there was property damage. There were people hospitalized. The cops sat on their, sit on, sat on their hands. Can you imagine if that was a Democratic president that people were rioting against and the cops sat on their hands? Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. And in it, 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 the, the whole thing at it, it, it NYU, I mean, there's actually there's, there's actual footage of a, I guess she was a Trump supporter, but of a woman who was there to see the, the, the show being interviewed by the news and someone just walks right up to her and pepper sprays her in the face. 
you don't agree with me, so I'm going to pepper spray you. And in, in, in California, at Berkeley, they were busting out windows on cars sitting in traffic on the road and pepper spraying the occupants of the cars. This is not, this is not protest. This is riot. This is, this is doing, this is being violent. And, and if, if it keeps escalating like it is with, with this, this Antifa, which is supposed to stand for anti-fascist, they're, they are being fascist. They're not anti-fascist. They are fascist. They're saying, you agree with me or I'm going to do you bodily harm. That's what they're saying. Well, to be fair, that's just an American. Dimitri last week was talking about how words have been repurposed. Uh, when anti-fascism becomes fascism, that just means that yet another phrase has been repurposed. Right. Well, like Google, we talked about Google has has redefined fascism and fascism is when it is 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 defined as essentially the right wing that's that's literally google google's definition of fascism is the right wing that's yeah, their definition nice. of fascism yeah somehow that doesn't surprise me um but i mean then again it is google yeah i think google is one of the places that has those nap spaces we were talking about a few shows ago i saw today where i was working a garden decoration made out of steel and it looked like the google logo yep and it said it said giggle <laughs> that's <laughs> that's kind of funny it literally made me giggle but yeah it's the the, the what what these people are doing and and and, and it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about how I have I've, I've gained some 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 Democrats as friends over all this. They, they feel the same way about it as me. They look at the Berkeley thing and go, what are you people doing? You know, they're, they're like, is this supposed to be they, they they look at them the same way you and I look at the alt right. It's like, what are you people doing? It's not helping things and they, they they're looking at the, the 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 blm and antifa people the same way they're like what what are you trying to accomplish all you're doing is making people more mad at you that's all you're doing i mean it's it, it's you know it goes back to the the whole the the black lives matter thing when, when they were just walking into restaurants during Sunday brunch and disrupting everybody's Sunday brunch. Does that make people want to say, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. We're just going to take up your cause. You just ruined my Manhattan $55, $60 a person Sunday brunch. We're going to take up your cause now doesn't work that way no I mean and it, 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 it shouldn't work that way I but I don't really have too much more to add to that one so I, I, <laughs> I got kind of distracted I was going through the Twitter feed and I saw a story about apparently a uh, an uh, well uh, apparently there's going to be some Planned Parenthood protests this weekend I guess in some places they've already started Someone apparently took a used maxi pad and shoved it in one of the planned protesters, Planned Parenthood protesters' faces, which is just yeah, which is just disgusting. Which is which is a felony. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people don't realize that because you know, with the 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 diseases that are now communicable through um, bodily fluids, it is actually now a felony to to unwillingly expose someone to your bodily fluids in most instances. So you might want to be a little more careful what you do with your fluids. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if if someone did that to me, I mean, that 
you know, if it, when, when, when something like that happens to a police officer, they are now basically the police department is now paying for them to have monthly AIDS tests. I mean, that's people don't realize that that biologicals are bad. And if you're going to do something like that and you you get caught, you are going to prison. Well, this surely isn't the administration to be doing that with because the one thing they do seem to be holding pretty hard and fast to is the fact that they were going to be an administration of the rule of law. Um, they actually have been kicking off ice raids all over the country, which has people even more upset about the whole fact that we actually have a POTUS who's wanting to enforce our immigration laws as they stand now instead of saying, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll point out that they shouldn't be here and then rely on them to self-deport. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I know I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm living a great life. And they told me to leave on my own? It doesn't work that way. You know, it's it's it, 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 it's it's like the whole the whole Second Amendment thing. They want to make more and more laws. Well, enforce the twenty two thousand plus laws that are on the books first. Yeah. You know, I mean, if that's the way you want to work it, we don't need we don't need more laws on law abiding citizens. We need the laws that are on the books enforced. You know, is it, Stop calling for new, law, new laws. We I, don't need new laws. I am glad you brought up Second Amendment because you reminded me of a story that I'd heard about earlier in, the, earlier in the week, and I keep forgetting to talk about it. Did you know in some of the final hours of the Obama administration that he had passed a law that uh, people uh, that were receiving Medicare or Medicaid that were deemed um, – I don't know the exact word they use, but basically – um, there's a medical term for when you start having difficulty remembering things, and it's not Alzheimer's. It was some other word that they used. They were actually starting to compile a database of the people that were of a certain age that they were on Medicare or Medicaid and were having difficulty with mental faculties to make sure that they knew who among those people had access to firearms. I had no idea that was happening. That's unconstitutional. And apparently the uh, Congress has agreed with your statement because they're now working to undo that particular law. Yeah, that's that that 100 percent goes against the Constitution just because you're older. I mean, we I mean, what how, what do they consider losing your 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 mental faculties? I mean, what what do they consider that that's where where it gets slippery. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I could sit there in front of somebody and say, Oh man, I totally forgot. I got to do this. Oh, you're losing your mental capacity to, to, to be able to handle a firearm. I mean, really it's, this is the kind of stuff that, that they, they, they want to pull with the second amendment you know, like, you know, trying to say that people with PTSD shouldn't have firearms. Well, what is the percentage of of law enforcement officers that have been diagnosed with PTSD? What are you going to do? Tell them that they can carry a firearm at work, but they can't when they're off work? I mean, how does that work? These, these they, they're, they're, they're trying to create laws that can be used in a broad spectrum and and what that does is it, it it keeps opening up this can of worms to keep people from being able to to have their right to keep and bear arms which is given to them by the constitution you know it Another uh, law that they tried to do comes to mind, and it's one of the ones that I was very vocally opposed to. Uh, there were attempts all through the Obama administration to start putting uh, certain types of mental health restrictions um, on people that could purchase firearms, which on the face of it makes sense. I mean, you, you I mean, 
Who's going to who if you if you read in the newspaper, Obama administration working to restrict access of gun, uh, for gun ownership for folks that have uh, been deemed mentally unstable. You read the headline, you're like, hey, that's not a bad idea. But then you go and you actually look at the law what that they're trying to pass. And one of the things that they deemed a mental instability was PTSD, that people that had been diagnosed with PTSD would not be allowed to carry a firearm. Do you, right. know, how, do you know how many of our police officers in uniform every day have been diagnosed with PTSD? What are, I mean, that would have instantly made us in England because we would have had no cops on the streets with guns. Exactly. And, and, and who, you know, they're, they're basically saying that all of the, everybody in the military that's come back and been diagnosed with PTSD after seeing war, you, it's traumatic. Seeing what you see in war is traumatic and saying that these men and women that come back and they have PTSD who are better trained in handling firearms than most people in this country can't own a firearm. I mean, and, and again, I said it's, it's a slippery slope. They can, they can go in with, with mental disorders, keep coming. I mean, they get to the point where they can say, well, if, if you have OCD, if you've been diagnosed by a psychiatrist with OCD, you can't own a firearm. You know, I mean, how far does it go? How far can they take it? You start opening up, you know, I, 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 I it's, it's, it's hard to, yeah. If somebody is seriously mentally deranged, obviously, but, but where do you, where do you end and mental problems. And once you open up the mental problem thing, how far can they take it? That's, that's where the problem comes in. And to, to tell somebody that's gone to war for the country, that's gone and fought for the country, when they come back, that they have no right to protect themselves is ludicrous to me. It's insane to me. I mean, because it seems like every time you turn around, they're just trying to find yet another way to to take guns off of the table. And I, I don't understand that because these are the same people that have armed bodyguards around them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You talk, about, you talk to all these people in Hollywood. They're like, oh, no, guns are bad. But they make millions of dollars a year, usually playing a character in a movie at least once or twice a year that's running around with a gun in their hand. If guns are, I mean, that that was one thing that I can honestly say about Richard Dean Anderson when he was younger, because he was staunchly opposed to firearms when he was younger. And he played a character on a TV show that I watched growing up as a kid, which was MacGyver. And he actually made them, he forced them to rewrite the script. Because in the pilot episode, MacGyver was running around, with, I think it was with like a what, what, it was some sort of an Uzi machine gun or something, something that was fairly new and looked kind of cool in the 80s. And then from that episode on, he never even looked at another gun because Richard Dean Anderson, up until he was in his late 30s, was diametrically opposed to firearms. Now, at some point, he either changed his mind or softened his stance because he spent, what was it, eight, nine years running around on Stargate SG-1, the series, as... Uh, Colonel and eventually Brigadier General Jack O'Neill with a gun in his hand and on his hip every show. So either something changed or, or he decided that it wasn't that big of a deal. But that's kind of my point, though, because he stopped speaking so publicly about it when he started making money carrying a gun in his hand. I don't have an issue what your political beliefs are, but don't tell me that your political your political beliefs or your beliefs about guns are more important than mine when you're running around on a TV screen flashing a gun making $22 million to flash a gun while you're telling me guns are bad. Well, yeah, and, and you can even point to the, the, the people in Hollywood who... Like you said, they're they're worth millions and millions of dollars, and when they go out in public, at least half of them, if not more, have armed security with them too. You know, it's real easy to tell somebody that they can't protect their home when your home is protected. You know, it's it's you know, you know, you shouldn't have a gun because I don't have a gun. Oh, I do have 
armed security, though. I mean, it's it's so hypocritical that it it, it just it, it astounds me. And you know, it's it, people like like I mean, I'll name some names: Deborah Messing, uh, Rosie O'Donnell. They're so staunchly against gun ownership. But these people, they go out in public and everywhere they go, not everywhere, but when they go out publicly, they're protected. I'm not. I go out to eat dinner. I don't have an armed bodyguard with me. I, you know, sorry, I can't afford that. I don't have your millions and millions of dollars. If we all had millions and millions of dollars and we could pay people to protect us, then maybe. But I'd still love my guns and I'd want to go shoot them. I love going to the range. I've never shot a person. I've never shot anything but paper and dinner every once in a while. All right, well, we have actually hit the bottom of the hour, top of the hour, so we're going to take the uh, top of the hour break. When we come back, we're going to change topics, talk about this Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the fact that they've kind of become a thorn in Republican side of late, and apparently they're going to continue that trend. Well, maybe. We'll talk about that, too, when we get back. This is Robinson and Wright. You are listening to us live right now on KLRNRadio.com. Don't go away. We will be right back. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger from Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Hey, folks. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Well, we're back, and it's the top of the hour, uh, of hour number two. And as promised, we are going to talk about the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals here in just a minute because there's been some interesting developments with that over the last few days. But I have to ask a question first. What the hell is going on with Lena Dunham? What is she, what the, I mean, I keep seeing help us, Le, help us Lena is like trending, and it's got like weird pictures of her in awkward positions and unshowered and unkempt. What the hell is going on with Lena Dunham? What is she doing now? And and something about she's she's trying to say that we need to we need to be able to talk to women that don't agree with us and get them to come over to our side. And I'm like, none of the women I know are coming over to your side. Um, it's another one. I was in a DM group tonight, and there were some. In, in in this this direct message group I'm in, there were 
some Democrats that were in there, they were going, oh, God, just shut up. Would somebody just shut her up? They're embarrassed. She embarrasses them. Oh, I, I, I just, I don't understand why they have to just, I mean, I mean, just, just do whatever you get paid for it. And otherwise, other than that, sit down and shut up. I mean, I don't understand. I don't understand why this is a hard thing. That's like Will we- Will Wheaton, for God's sake. Wesley, Ugh. Wesley Crusher. I mean, I grew up, we're around the same age. I grew up watching him on Star Trek The Next Generation. I would actually, you know, I was... 13, 14, 15, all the way up to, what was it, about 20 when that show stopped. When when Wesley was on that particular show, I used to think about, you know, it would be awesome to be a kid, be his age, and be doing the things that he's doing. You know, the, the typical teenage dreams about, hey, what if what if you woke up what, the next morning and suddenly you were on the Star Tri- Starship Enterprise? What would you do? You know, same stupid crap all kids used to talk about. If you, especially if you were a sci-fi nerd. But anyway, I mean, listening to him now, I'm just like, dude. I mean, it just reminds me of the whole, <clears throat> what was it? Um, I don't know if Picard ever actually said this, but I know somebody managed to put together an audio file of him yelling, shut up, Wesley, once. And somebody, like, at an interview for him a long time ago, like, played it over and over and over again. I would just like to find, <laughs> I would just like to find that audio clip and pin it to his timeline. Well, and, and he says it to everybody else, basically. I mean, if 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 it last I looked, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that I'm blocked by him again on social media. But I know on his Twitter account, his pinned tweet is, contact me and I'll give you my blocked list so you don't have to listen to the right wingers, something along that lines. He actually has a published block list of every account he blocks so he can give it to to liberals and they can block everybody on the list. That is basically saying we want to be able to say what we want to say and we'll say it and we don't want to hear an opposing opinion at all. America. But <laughs> Well, I mean, isn't that kind of the point, though? Nobody wants to hear an opposing opinion anymore. They yeah. they, they want an echo chamber. And that that is actually one of the biggest drawbacks with social media because it now gives people the ability to create echo chambers. I mean, like all of these Facebook pages that are either extreme left or extreme right, and you go in there and you hang out and you talk and you pump each other up and you go and you do whatever you're going to do, and it basically becomes an echo chamber. That's one of the reasons, and that's honestly how Finding Common Ground came to be, because America Off the Rails is a show that gets most of the credit because it's the one that's kind of taken off, but again, that's kind of that whole thing about people like to hear the things that they agree with and they don't like to hear the things that they don't agree with. So, of course... A conservative talk show with a conservative talk show host yelling about events of the day and talking about how crappy everything was under Obama. Of course, that's going to be the one that gets everybody's attention. But the Facebook page originally started with me just railing about things that I wanted to rail about. And I got bored within about three months because it was just everybody would come in. They would agree with me or the ones that didn't agree with me would come in, make a smart ass comment and then leave. And then so I got this idea of, you know. Because by then, uh, Hannity and Combs had stopped, which was actually one of my favorite shows on Fox News. My, my, mine too. I was just as soon as you started talking, I was just to say how much I loved Hannity and Combs. It, it was, I think, it was a fantastic show. So we we had the idea of taking that concept and making it a Facebook page. So I brought over a liberal Dave, who, um, and back then it was a completely different page. We actually. Kind of decided to have a little bit of fun with it. For those of you who don't know, I have a limp due to an injury. Um, and I've talked about it before, so I'm not going to go into it again. But I have had, I've been given over the year the nickname, over the years, uh, the nickname Wobbles, and it just kind of stuck with me. Well, Wobbles eventually morphed into a penguin avatar on this particular Facebook page, and eventually became a penguin wearing a, a Gladstone fa- uh, flag t-shirt. Um, big yellow t-shirt with the Don't Tread on Me flag on it. And then Dave actually, is, oddly enough, is a person who is a liberal leftist who, honest to God, does not have his right hand. He has a nub where his right hand should be. And actually, he was one of the first people 
that ever called me Wobbles. And it's kind of a funny story, so I'm going to go into it real quick just to give you the background of how all this started. We originally worked together at Convergence, which is a call center that worked for DirecTV, AT&T, and a few other places. Back then, I was on the broadband project, and I happened to be walking down the aisle one day, and I had managed to bump into his chair. And Dave, being the little smartass that he was, was like, hey, watch it, Wobbles. And I don't even know who he is at this point, and I'm just, I'm looking at him. And I'm like, what the, f- what, what? And then I look down, and he's got his little left hand that he's typing away, and his nubs like moving the mouse all over the place. I was like, I'll watch it if you watch it, nubs. And that became our nickname for each other. And then it eventually actually became the name of the uh, the first page and the original radio show that eventually became Finding Common Ground. Because while everybody loved the concept of little cute characters arguing about politics, too many people were complaining about about it being confusing. So it, I mean, <laughs> they're like, we we come in because we see all these pictures with cute cartoon characters, and then we realize you're yelling at each other about politics. We're so confused. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we should probably change the concept, but it it was a cute way but to hey, start it. And you, it you know what? Wobbles and Nubs sounds like a great cop show. <laughs> Actually, we were toying with the idea for for a while to put together like. Um, YouTube videos for like kids with historical events from and have those characters be the main characters that would go back and talk about the and put and put like historical events in a kid's perspective. It was just we never could find anybody that was technically savvy enough to put it together the way that we wanted it. So it, it, it's just one of those things that just kind of set there. <laughs> and then I, at some point I'd even toyed with the idea of making it children's books, but. Then I started doing 800 million hours of radio a week, and who the heck has time to write children's books when you're doing 8 million hours of radio, working 40 hours a week, and trying to raise a family all at the same time? So who knows? Did I lose you again? Yep, I lost him again. Yay, Skype hates me. <laughs> Let's see where we are. Um, up there. No, no, no. Would you stop hanging up on me? <laughs> uh, yell at Skype, please. <laughs> it's more fun to yell at you. I can't really yell at Skype. <laughs> I, I can type in all caps at Skype, but that doesn't quite feel the same. Okay, so anyway. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of a general background of what eventually became the Finding Common Ground page. And actually, it's still fairly popular. It's still being followed by like 3,000 people. Um, there's actually a team of admins over there now. I don't go over there very much, but there are there's a libertarian, a liberal, and a conservative, and they kind of post interesting things and go back and forth. I'd honestly thought about starting to merge some of the plethora of pages that I built over the years and start moving them over to the KL, KLRN page, but I didn't really think anybody wanted weird political discussions on a radio Facebook page, so I, I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. But anyway, um, so actually while we've been talking and I've been going down memory lane, I've been shot a link to an article uh, that seems to have started most of this Lena Dunham situation. Apparently, she was uh, on the Today Show uh, this morning and flustered the guest host, Maria Schreiber. Um, apparently, Lena Dunham flustered the Today Show's guest host, Maria Schreiber, on Friday, February 10th, after she asked the veteran TV journalist a rather racy question on the morning talk show, and they have an exchange for the video. But anyway, it uh, has something to do with a penis, I think. Um, thank you so much for stopping by, Schreiber told Dunham... With a smile, I had a chance to look at three episodes for this new season, and it looks terrific. You saw a penis, right? Dunham asked deadpan, at which point Shriver turned bright red and began to laugh nervously. Yeah, well, I saw more than that, she said. You caught me there for a second. I'm not sure if you are allowed to say that on television, but you did. Uh, So I guess that was one of the things that started it all. And then, of course, she's been uh, doing her usual leftist-leaning stuff about, you know, we need to... Find ways to bring women over <coughs> over to our side of the arguments, etc. I don't understand how that works, though, because these people that she that she's talking about that need to ha- have their minds changed have already made up their minds. Yeah. So I'm not. It's uh, it, the 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 her her arguments. And she's just you know she she goes full bore into everything. And then she gets upset when people call her on it. 
it's it's a I, I don't I don't really understand her her way of thinking. I mean, she'll post a picture of her on social media sitting on a toilet eating cake naked and then get upset that people have a problem with it. I, I really don't understand how her her train of thought works. No, I well, I I really don't either. Um, sorry, I was being told I needed to play a certain audio clip, but I don't seem to find the it named the way they said it was named. But anyway, it doesn't really fit with the conversation right now. Anyway, we might be able to bring it back to that in a minute because we we need to kind of move on anyway. I just I saw all the stuff going on with Lena, and I'm like, what has she done now? Because I haven't really seen that much about it. I've been focused more on this whole Ninth uh, Circuit Court of Appeals thing. Um, and it's been an interesting ride because, it, well, I mean, honestly, the the judges that made this decision are, well, uh, no pun intended, but way off in left field. Um, basically, for those of you who haven't been following along at home, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, based on a lawsuit that both, I believe it was Washington and Minnesota have filed, has determined that the, and this is after it being uh, struck down in a lower court, it's gone to the Ninth Circuit and the... Uh, the lower court's decision was upheld by a, a three-panel uh, judge uh, group that had actually reviewed the case and said that they didn't agree with the intent of the law, uh, which, first of all, I didn't realize it was a judge's or even a judge panel's uh, obligation when looking at a law to determine whether or not they agreed with or understood the intent of the law. Their, their job was to determine whether or not it was constitutional which in this instance it actually is, whether anybody wants to admit it or not. Um, also, they had, in one of the opinions, had stated that as far as they were concerned, due process need, needed to be extended to green card holders and anyone wishing to enter into this country. Now, this is a very dangerous statement for them to make for a couple of different reasons. Because one of the things, you, you, you listen to that first sentence and you say, due process needs to be extended to green card holders. And you think, well, green card holders already have due process. Maybe. Because the thing about green card holders is their due process doesn't actually kick in until they are actually on American soil. And that's not an uncommon thing, but it's something that nobody thinks about. That's why when you travel abroad, people will remind you, hey, where you're going to be at, you are not necessarily in America anymore. So be careful what you do because you will be subject to the laws of that country. We don't even necessarily have the same due process rights in other countries that we have here, unless, of course, we at some point uh, are able to get to our our embassy if there is one available, and then at that point you are back on American soil and subject to American laws. But the idea that this same group of people, the the, the leftists that keep saying that we can't be Team America World Police and we need to mind their own business that are now saying the Constitution for America needs to be the Constitution for the whole world, you can't have it both ways. You can't. No. It's, it, it, you know, you, you, <clears throat> you bring a point there that it's all of a sudden in the last 21 days, they're concerned about the Constitution. That's the other thing. I mean, I've, I was literally, I've literally been told over the last eight years that the Constitution's outdated. The Constitution needs to go away. The Constitution needs to be rewritten. Written. Now all of a sudden it's, oh, my Constitution. Really? You told me two years ago that the Constitution needed to go away. It's it it the 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 irony of what is going on now just absolutely kills me that all of a sudden out of the blue since in, in the last 21 days or at least since November 8th, all of a sudden all these people have become constitutionalists. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just asinine to watch. I mean, it's not unexpected. I don't. It's not unexpected, but it's just funny to watch because it always seems like the the whoever becomes the opposition party is suddenly the one that's screaming about constitution. Yeah, except for people like you and me, I, I scream about the constitution, and no matter who is in office, and I still do right now. Well, yeah, but that's because we don't change our opinions with the when with when the wind blows. No, we don't. I, I just it watching this this whole thing. I mean, I, I see I see flaws on on both sides, <clears throat> but when it comes right down to it, no matter how this executive order order was written, it's it's what what was done with it is law already that our previous president used on numerous occasions. I never heard anybody on the left scream and yell. In fact, most people don't even realize he used it. But now it's a big deal. I that's that's just what what I just if anything it, Trump could do, Trump could literally right now do everything Obama did and the left would scream about it. Well, I mean, he could he could rewrite the ACA as exactly what it is and put it in place and the left would scream about it. Well, I mean, I mean well, it, that's what's well, happening we've with already, this. That's already been proven because uh, Barack Obama actually stopped travel into this country multiple times from multiple places and nobody said a word. Um, now, <coughs> need to finish up with the, the ice story real quick. Sorry, for some reason, my cough seems to be trying to come back tonight. I think it's because it's gotten warm enough that the cedar trees are starting to be ornery again. But anyway, um, the interesting thing, along with, you know, the fact that the judges kind of, again, uh, legislated from the bench basically decided that uh, the Attorney General in Washington had more authority about uh, immigration than a sitting president, which is not true. Um, but at the same time, uh, not every judge on that panel apparently, or not every judge in the Ninth Circuit apparently felt that way, because we actually have a copy of an uh, instrument filed today, date stamped February 10th, 2017, in the United States Court of Appeals, for the Ninth District, State of Washington and State of Minnesota, uh, plaintiffs uh, or appellees versus Donald J. Trump, President of the United States, uh, defendant, and it basically is a, uh, well, it's Thomas, Chief Judge and en en bank Coordinator. A judge on this court has made a uh, South Sapont request that a vote be taken as to whether the order issued by the three judges' uh, motions panel on February 9th, 2017 should be reconsidered in bunk. A sous opponent and bunk call having been made, the parties are instructed to file simultaneous briefs setting forth their respective positions on whether this matter should be reconsidered in bunk. The brief should be filed on or before 11 a.m. Pacific time on Thursday, February 16th. The supplemental brief shall be filed electronically and consist of no more than 14,000 words. See General Order 54C3. Uh, uh, now, for those of you that need an English translation for this, this basically just means that one of the extended panel of judges on the Ninth uh, Circuit feel that the uh, the shortened panel of three judges stepped in it when they made this particular ruling, and they're considering having it tossed. So Donald yeah. Trump might not actually have to, because I, I hear rumors now that he's considering a, a new executive order or wanting to see about taking it to the Supreme Court. It may not matter at this point, because it sounds like the Ninth Circuit is about to overturn their own decision. Because they wouldn't have filed that if they didn't plan on overturning it. Yeah, and and to be honest, they, they should. I, I'm I'm not going to sit here and say that that his executive order was perfect, and was was perfectly written. I mean, it was written quickly. But to go back to what I said earlier, the previous president did. Uh oh, 
You still there? The ninth. They do this kind of stuff a lot. I mean, it's 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 just mm, they're in my mind, and and I know in a lot of people's minds, they're really kind of a joke. And before we take a break, I just want to... Well, I guess we'll kind of make it the word of the day. In bonk. Um, in law, the term in Coming bonk... Coming a joke. You're kind of cutting in and out pretty bad, so I can't tell when you're when you're done talking. We, yeah, and I, you are too. <laughs> oh, well, I'm... I'm coming through fine on my end. Maybe my hamsters are getting pissy. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a really quick break so I can see if I can figure out what's causing the technical issue because we've about hit that time anyway. Uh, this is Robinson and Wright. We'll be right back here in about uh, three minutes or so. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps Stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Having a place to go after school will make you a better student. Having an outlet to express yourself will make you a better artist. Having something to do together will make you a better family. At The Y, we're helping build better friends, listeners, writers, swimmers, scientists, and musicians one chance at a time. Get the gift of opportunity. Support The Y at YMCA.net. 
the why for a better us. Folks, welcome back. Well, believe it or not, we're already in the last half hour of the show. You know, I remember thinking that two hours would give us time to talk about everything. I'm noticing that's still not really working. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what I like about this show is, is you know, and, and I don't know if people really realize it. I mean, we just kind of, we, we, we have a little bit of an idea of what we're going to talk about. But we just kind of freeform it, and I like doing it this way. It's it's kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's it's honestly it's it's entertaining for one, and for two, um, from a host perspective, it's just kind of like, oh, we just took a turn I wasn't expecting. Let's see where this goes. Um, and honestly, when you start trying to do as much radio as I do on a daily basis, you can't. I mean, because when I first started doing it, we were doing maybe two hours a week. And I swear, I would spend like six hours prepping for each hour. I would have every second of every show scripted down to the point where I knew exactly what sound clips were going to be played when. And they sounded technically flawless, but they were boring as hell. And I started learning to fly by the seat of my pants a little bit more. And the, the more comfortable I've gotten with it over the last now, well, about nine years counting production work. Um... It's just, it's kind of easier for me, especially if I'm going to have a co-host. We shoot a few messages back and forth here and there, kind of get a general idea of what we're going to talk about, find some audio clips to go along with it, and just run with it. And, and we lost him again. It also makes instances like tonight where we've lost the co-host four times less stressful because I don't have everything mapped out to the point where I'm freaking out because we're not on time or on task. So well, welcome back, Dan. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm here again, and Woo-hoo. and again, looking at it, it everything here, perfect signal, everything's great. Lost your audio, and two seconds later, boom, call ended. Yeah, I think it's time to yell at Skype. All right. So anyway, last topic, last segment, the ice sweeps uh, that are uh, that are apparently now kicking up everywhere. In the last twenty uh, last twenty minutes, I've had. Three or four different articles linked uh, to me from different parts of the country that are now uh, kicking off the ice sweeps. Can I just say it's about damn time? I mean, that's probably going to irritate people and piss some people off, but can I just say it's about damn time? We've had a president for the last eight years who knew we had an immigration problem, but basically relied on them to deport themselves most of the time to avoid bad press. Now, at the same time, he was very discreetly deporting people like crazy. Uh, Barack Obama actually, apparently, if you look at the numbers, uh, assuming these numbers are accurate, because I question anything that comes from that particular administration, apparently, uh, from their perspective, deported more people than George W. Bush and Bill Clinton combined. Now, I don't know whether or not those numbers are accurate, and I've never bothered to look, but it just seems funny that someone who apparently was, you know, anti-war and was using drone strikes to kill people and anti-immigration issues other than let them come over was deporting people like crazy. It's almost like the guy was talking out of both sides of his mouth. I think we talked about that in the beginning of the show, too, because he kind of did that with the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> Big surprise. But, I mean, you know, it, it, if, if, if I can say one thing that's been refreshing about Trump, he says what he's going to do, and then he does it. Absolutely. He may, he may I mean, not always it's... like it, but he says what he's going to do, and he does it. Yeah, and and it's with with Obama he said what everybody wanted to hear and then he did what covered his butt and Donald Trump just he you know a lot of people like to say he has you know he's too outspoken he has diarrhea of the mouth whatever but he says he wants to do something he does it Now, 
you and I, you and I have talked. I, I really and and let things take the course they're supposed to. Because to be honest, if he puts forth things to take the course they're supposed to, he's still doing it. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to get everything in his presidency done in the first two months, in the first hundred days. It doesn't have to work that way for people to think he's doing what he said he was going to do. I guess that's a matter of perspective, though, because for some of the people that have voted for him, that's exactly what they wanted to see. And that goes back to what I was talking about towards the beginning of the show with Sean Hannity, who's now coined the phrase moving at the speed of Trump. He's mad because Congress is not getting things done at the same speed that Trump is wanting to move. And there is one point in that that I will agree with him with. This is the same Congress that told us for the last eight years that they were going to repeal Obamacare. This is the same Congress that kept telling us that either in 2012 or 2016, we were going to have a Republican president and they were going to do what they needed to do to deal with the Obamacare fiasco. And yet, while they've had eight years to prepare... They brought absolutely nothing to the table about how they were going to deal with Obamacare now that we actually have control of the House, Senate, and the executive branch. And that honestly is one of the, the main things that has literally m made me see red and not in a good way because they've been telling us for eight years they were going to do this. Now they have a chance to do this, and now they're talking about it being towards the end of this year, possibly the beginning of 20, even maybe 2017 or 2018 before they can get it done. We're talking about something that's going to curtail a lot of the things that the Trump administration has said that they were going to do because they're talking about tax reforms and everything else. We can't really do too much about the tax code while we have the Obamacare fiasco completely commingled with our tax code. So that's going to have to be fixed to do some of these other things that he's been talking about wanting to be able to do. And the fact that, again, they've had eight years to prep and they have nothing? Seriously? Yeah, it's you know, it's it's funny you, you started talking about that and and it goes back to a, a radio show that I used to listen to and one of my favorite sound bites that they used to play was one of their producers saying, I bring nothing to the table. They they brought nothing to the table. After eight years, they have zilch i mean it, it 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 drives me nuts it you know it maybe maybe it's exactly why trump keeps just issuing executive orders because he he knows that that they have nothing i mean i, I just It, it, it's what's frustrated me since since the midterms to begin with. You know, it nothing really got done. Some stuff got maybe slowed down. That's about it. Um, you know, it's it's why I don't consider myself to have an, a party affiliation. I, it's oh, I'm politically homeless. I've felt that way. Yes. For a long time. Um, I even desperately tried to run to the Libertarian Party until I was basically told they don't want conservatives. Yeah, yeah, that. So that, that was me. fun, and, you know. <laughs> but you got this whole, this whole Libertarians for Trump movement. I don't understand that either. Um, I you know, that, I think that may be more the anarchist wing of the Libertarian Party, because Trump would make a good anarchist. He he actually you're you're right he probably would, um, except for the fact that then he does something big government, which is totally anti anarchist. I I don't think honestly the neither party is what they were originally created to be. None of the parties are. Even the Libertarian Party now isn't what it was created to be. Um, 
you know, there's 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 a new party that, that that's gaining traction, the Federalist Party. I, I won't latch on with them. I'm I'm watching. I'm interested. I know a couple people involved with it. I'll see what they decide to do and 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 the people they take on. There, there's been some things that have impressed me about it. Um, but I'm not I'm not going to jump right on board. There's there's just no way. I did that with the libertarians, and I am not a libertarian anymore. You know they 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 had a very good very good opportunity this election that they just blew they absolutely blew it which which told me that I'm done with that too I mean it just it didn't make any sense to me because I mean and I've talked about this before but we may have new folks that are listening um, I actually became really involved with the libertarian party this year for the first time ever i actually interviewed the national head of the libertarian party more than once on the america off the rails radio show and was basically point blank told that when they realized that the republicans were going to float somebody like trump they were doing everything they could to make any conservatives that came over realize that they were not going <coughs> to not going to be able to co up the party and also were doing whatever they could to try to make them feel as unwelcome as possible because they didn't really want a bunch of conservatives coming over and trying to reshape the Libertarian Party. Um, and then the same guy that's telling me how much they're uh, all about the Constitution and all about uh, limited government, etc., the, uh, their presidential nominee and their vice pres presidential nominee <coughs> start talking about how the no fly no buy list was a good idea and that um and about three or four other things that i can't think of off the top of my head but it was funny because like i said he came on the show like two or three times and then all these negative stories started coming out and i kept reaching out to him for comment and he just stopped responding to me well yeah and and you had the vice presidential candidate weld who basically is I won't say he's an anti second amendment guy but he wasn't real keen on the second amendment and you know that's what what I think really hurt Austin Peterson with becoming their their nominee he was welcoming Cruz supporters and Rubio supporters and Kasich supporters and anybody that wanted to come over to support him, he was welcoming them. I was I was watching his his you know he does and and, and still does, um, did and still does, you know he he'll do. I don't even know what you really call him. I mean he'll they'll, he'll do a, a Facebook forum basically and you can go on there and you can respond to him and he speaks and he was welcoming and i was watching all of these people that i knew that were rubio supporters when rubio dropped out and cruise supporters everybody else coming over and he welcomed them and i think that hurt him with the libertarian party and that is one of the things that turned me off of the libertarian party is you have people coming over to support a candidate. You should welcome that. They're they're looking for a home. Bring these people in. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, if there's somebody that's that that is close to a liber is close to a libertarian that's a Republican as you can get, it's Ted Cruz. He's a hundred percent constitution which is what a libertarian is supposed to be. It's supposed to be all about states' rights and individual rights, and, and they, they shunned those people. And I watched it happen, and I was like, what are you doing? You're on the ballot in all 50 states, and you are going to pick Johnson again. I, I mean, it just... It, it, it turned into a joke for me. I, 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 this is the election that I actually 
supported Republicans because I thought the field was awesome. As soon as I saw the way things were going, I went back and I supported Austin Peterson. Then I saw him get shunned. And, you know, he's talking about a Senate run in 18. And, and when asked what party are you going affiliation are you going to run under? He still calls himself a libertarian, but he will not choose a party right now. He doesn't want know what party he's going to run under. He, I don't think he thinks that the libertarian party is going to give him the backing to make that Senate run. He may end up running under the federalist party, or he may end up running as a Republican. You know, which which to me makes him very much like like Paul. You know, I mean, Paul is a libertarian that runs and 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 sits as a Republican. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it's not that unheard of. I mean, we had a socialist run as a Democrat. Yes, that's true. So, I mean, you know, uh, labels are labels. I don't know. I mean, the whole thing with me, you know, because we're mentioning the whole Austin Peterson thing. There was another one that came out of nowhere that I actually was pretty hopeful about for a little while, and that was Evan McMullen. Watching, <laughs> watching how he, watching how he started to how he ended, is like watching bad gay midget porn. Yeah, I, I mean, I had a a comment about him. I made a comment about him. I believe it was earlier today, and I, I basically called his little effort that he's putting forward. It's it's Democrats 2.0. It really is. If you listen to him, and you look, if you if you go on to social media, look at him. He he has literally become a Donald Trump troll. All he does is troll Donald Trump. That's it. That's his whole existence now, is to troll the Trump administration. And it's, it's, I, I get it. You were, you were supposedly brought in to block him or try to block him, whatever. I totally, I, I didn't disagree with it at the time. I thought he gave people a, a, a choice besides Hillary, Trump, or Johnson. There was another choice there. Great. It gave people somebody that they could say, okay, I didn't vote for any of them. I voted for this guy. He's, he's taken it too far. I mean, it's in, and, and his serious supporters are just as bad as the far left and the ultra Trump supporters. They're just as bad. If you say one thing about him, they freak out on you. Well, I mean, that, that <coughs> that's kind of everybody's go-to anymore. I mean, honestly, as soon as you say something that somebody doesn't agree with, you are an idiot, you're a moron. Um, and it, it, that's just the way it goes anymore. It's, it's just sad. <laughs> but, I mean, the, like I said, the thing with Evan McMullen is he came out so strong. I mean, I listened to him several times when he was on with Glenn Beck, and he said all of the things that he needed to say until he realized that he didn't have a chance. And now he's using the left's language and talking about things that make him sound like a social justice warrior and pointing out all the things that are wrong about Trump. I mean, it just, I, I'm, uh, I guess my biggest thing now is, you know, we're now, again, what, 21 days from the inauguration and we still have an entire segment of the population feasting on sour grapes. I'm done with the sour grapes because at this point, if you're still rooting for this man to fail, then you're as, you're as idiotic as people that were sitting on the Titanic rooting for the iceberg. And I, I'm done with that. Because at this point, we need him to succeed. Because if he fails, we've already had a president for the last eight years that no matter how hard he tried, because I, I will admit that I think Barack Obama had good intentions as far as 
in the direction that his moral compass was pointed, I think he did what he thought was best. And I'm not going to dispute that fact. I disagree with what he thought was best, but he tried. And the thing, the, but the problem is, almost everything he tried failed. I mean, let's recap with Obamacare. It was supposed to save families $2,500. It's now costing the average family $5,000. If you liked your doctor, you were supposed to be able to keep your doctor. I know this from personal experience did not happen because my kid's doctor went out of business shortly after Obamacare was passed because he couldn't keep up with the regulation. He closed his own practice and went to work for a more established practice. That way he could get uh, had the framework to deal with the extra paperwork. So it's put, I know for a fact it's putting doctors out of business. I know for a fact it has stopped companies from being able to expand. I know for a fact that it has impacted insurance companies and insurance policies that were being provided by employers because I lost my family plan this year through my wife's employer. I no longer have insurance as my wife's spouse through her employer. I have to rely specifically and solely on the insurance that I have provided through my employer now which had not been an issue up until now, which means with this mandate, if I were to try to make KLR and radio and all the other stuff that I do a full-time job, I would no longer have her insurance policy to fall back on, which means I would have to start paying a penalty because I wouldn't be able to provide myself health insurance because I would be self-employed and couldn't afford the health insurance, which goes back to this whole debate debacle that went on earlier this week where Bernie Sanders actually called someone to task for keeping her employer, um, her employee level at 49 because that way she didn't have to deal with Obamacare. Um, and he said, well, you're big enough that don't you already have 50 employees? And if you don't, shouldn't you? What if, what if, you're, what if one of your employees gets sick? And she's like, well, what about me? For the first time ever, I can't afford health insurance. And I'm not telling you I don't want to provide my people with health insurance. I want you to tell me how I'm supposed to be able to afford it. Well, you should just do it. That was basically his answer. Yeah, that's, I mean... You, you know a little bit of, of, of what's gone on with me. When, when Obama was elected president, I had Cadillac health insurance that was 100% paid for by my company. I had $20 co-pays for doctors and specialists, $10 co-pays for all my prescriptions, and $50 co-pays for emergency room and hospital. Literally, if I had surgery, if I had to have open heart surgery, it would cost me $50. Then I went to a $12,500 deductible. Then I went to a $12,500 deductible and my insurance started costing me $200 a week. We finally switched after I accrued $30,000 in medical debt to Aetna, who Aetna has left the, I call it a cooperative. That's what I call it. But the pool, Aetna has left the pool. Now I'm easing my way back. Now I have $35 copays for doctor visits, 70 for specialists, 250 for the emergency room and a $12,500 deductible for a hospital stay. And instead of $200 a week, it now only costs me $75 a week. Companies are leaving. They still fall under the regulations, but they are not putting into the pool. And when they stop putting into the pool and they say, we're not doing it anymore, all of a sudden the premiums drop. Because your premiums were paying for other people to have insurance. You were insuring other people. I was not insuring just my family. I was insuring the people that couldn't afford insurance. And then those people, even though they couldn't afford it, maybe it made it more affordable, but if they still couldn't afford it, they got fined $2,500 a year still got their Medicaid, still got stuff covered, and I was still eating it. I was paying, and and still I am because of the regulations, I'm paying for women's health. 
I have one daughter. I pay for her women's health, but I'm paying for everybody else's women's health. It's just the whole system that, that was put in place is a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. It took working people and screwed them so that it maybe made it more affordable for people that couldn't afford insurance that were getting covered anyway. No, exactly. All right, so we are just about out of time. Now I want to give folks an update. We've actually been following along with uh, Scott Harvath, for those of you who don't know, is a former NYPD police officer who is fighting cancer. Um, actually, he had chemo treatment today and actually posted a picture shortly after it was over. Seems like he's still in the fight and hanging strong, so uh, hang tough, Scott. Uh, we are all pulling for you here, and uh, I do uh, check back from time to time on your page for updates. I um, just wanted to give you a bit of, bit of a shout out there. Uh, just add- Scott, Scott's a great guy. He's a <clears throat> a great follow on Twitter too. Um, sorry, I just had a Rick coughing fit. Um, oh, but so, so now it, we've you, named the coughing fits. I see how this goes. <laughs> um, but you can follow him. I believe his Twitter handle off the top of my head is just at Scott Harbath. Yeah, it is. It's at Scott Harbath, S-C-O-T-T-H-A-R-V-A-C-H. Uh, so you can just follow along there. I do encourage you to do so. Um, and at this point, we are officially out of time. So if you'd like, you can remind folks where it is that they can hang out with you when you're not on the radio with me. Um, but I kind of don't really do that very much anymore because I don't like Twitter. <laughs> um, and you can also listen to me on Wednesday nights with at Real Susan Swift on Constitution and Culture right here on KLRN Radio. <clears throat> All right. And on that note, folks, we are out. I will be back with you tomorrow morning for a weekend update edition of America Off the Rails. And then, of course, we will be over on CRNTalk.com at 10 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night, uh, 9 p.m. Central, 7 Pacific for America Off the Rails. And then it all starts over again on Monday at 11 p.m. Eastern right here live on KLRNRadio.com. Everybody take care. Have a great night. Remember, it's Friday. It's the start of the weekend. Don't rush it. Monday will be here before you know it. And let's hope it doesn't hurry. Take care. God bless.